Today we are looking at the ASUS A88XM Plus Micro ATX Socket FM2 Plus Motherboard. Let's take it out of the box. Inside the box you have two SATA cables, one of them at a right angle. The motherboard itself in this nice anti-static bag. Underneath here you've got the IO shield, some warranty information and stuff like that, user manual and two DVDs with utilities and drivers. Have a quick closer look at those here. Take a good look, you're probably never going to see them again. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about this motherboard. It has the FM2 Plus socket, that support for the new Kavari APUs that are yet to be released at the time of making this video. But it also has support for previous FM2, Richard and Trinity APUs, as well as the applicable Athlon series CPUs. It has four RAM slots capable of running dual channel DDR3 memory at up to 2400 MHz overclocked and up to 64GB in 4x16GB configuration. It also features overcurrent protection. It features one PCIe X16 3.0 slot, though with a non FM2 Plus processor, it will be running in 2.0. It has one PCIe 2.0 X16 slot, though that will only run in X4 when run in dual GPU mode. It has one PCIe 2.0 at X1 and one PCIe port. On the back we have two PS2 slots for your keyboard and for your mouse. We have HDMI, DVI and VGA inputs. We have four USB 2.0 slots and two USB 3.0. We have the gigabit Ethernet and the standard audio output. It has eight SATA 3 6 gigabits per second ports run on the AMD A88X Bolton D4 chipset. The size of this motherboard is 24.4cm by 23.4cm, so very nearly a square. Some of the features on it, it features ASUS's 5x protection, the ASUS DigiPlus VRM 4 plus 2 phase digital power design, the enhanced DRAM overcurrent protection, ESD guards electrostatic discharge protection to stop you zapping your motherboard by accident, has a 5k hour solid state capacitors with a 5000 hour lifespan, and it has a stainless steel black plate with corrosion resistant coating. Though, to be honest, I've never had my motherboard go rusty. But there we go. Other features worth mentioning is GPU boost. It can boost APUs by up to 30%. So they claim I will test that once I get a Kavari APU because I'll be doing tests then. Anyway, I can test them both together. Okay, so let's take a closer look at some of the parts of this motherboard. I'm not going to go through in too much detail, I do want to point, point out the main things about, about it. First of all, we have our CPU socket right here. I've already put a CPU in because, yeah, I kept leaving it lying around, I don't want to damage it, so yeah. So socket FM2 Plus, that means it's compatible with the new FM2 Plus APUs, the Kavari ones. Though at the time of making this video, they're not yet out. But it's also backwards compatible with the regular FM2 socket APUs uh, and CPUs. The uh, Athlon 2s also use FM2. We have your four RAM slots here. We've got these are the A channels. These are the B channels. I know sometimes you have A and A, B and B like this, but these are set out. The two closest to the CPU are A and the two further out are B. This comes with ASUS's DigiPlus VRM solution. So that's this chip right here. And that makes basically feeds only the amount of power that the APU needs at once at a time. It saves power and saves excess heat as well. And that's the cooling for all of this under here. Uh, as for the PCIe lanes, we've got PCIe 3.0 with an AP with the new APUs, the FM two plus ones this will be a 3.0 with a 6800k that i've got in here this lane will be a 2.0 oh it's an x16 one 16 lane this is a pcie x1 1x this is just a normal pcie lane so kind of old school i've never actually seen anything that goes in here but yeah it's quite old now but you know you might have something old that goes in there and here is the other PCIe X16 slot. So you can run them in Crossfire. Crossfire with this. Well, you know, you could do a bit of... I suppose you could have double... You could SLI here. But I know that's quite strange. Under here is the A88 chipset. And we have along here 
all of these here are SATA 6 gigabit per second. It's very. I think it's very good that they've got them up like this and along like this gives you much better choices when doing cable management. Another feature of this board is this GPU boost. This is exclusive only to the APUs. If you click this little switch here along like this, this will then enable the GPU boost and this can give it up to a 30% better performance or that's what ASUS claim on their website. Anyway, I will be testing this once it's in a system. I'll leave that on here. Next to this, you have the uh, the chassis fan, the number two chassis fan. The number one chassis fan is down here. And you've got your CPU fan right here. There's a, me a memory OK button here. This will test the RAM when you press it. And if it's not good, then it'll stay lit up. So it's, it's a good little thing to have, especially when you first put your system in. This is the, sta the standard 24 pin motherboard power connector. Not much else to say about that, really. Okay, so here is the USB 3 connection header. We've got three USB 2 2.0s here. We have a COM port here. Yeah, anybody uses those. And an LPT port here, which I can't think of a reason why you'd be using this, but it's kind of networking stuff. And the HD audio here. One thing that I have to say about this board is if you look here where your front panel connectors are, you don't get the normal ASUS connector that you just plug it in and then plug it straight on. And It's quite disappointing that they didn't do that. I, I'm not entirely sure why they haven't done that with this, because I don't think it's going to be an AMD or Intel solution thing. I can't be that difficult to make a piece of plastic to pop on the top, but... There we go, it doesn't have it, so you're going to have to go through the manual and go, what's, what's this? Okay. Also, there is a 4-pin power connector hidden right here in the corner. I don't know if you can see that. So you'll have another 4-pin connector kind of hanging loose here. Yeah, so that does mean this doesn't take much power overall. It's, I think they've done that because they didn't. They don't need all 8 pins. I mean, it's not going to... This, although you can overclock on this board, definitely. It's not going to be like a hardcore... Yes, I'm going to get 5 gigahertz out of it, and something like that, I think would be a little bit overkill for a motherboard such as this. So yeah, flip it over, there's really nothing particularly amazing to talk about here. It's just, yeah, it's clean, there's nothing special on it really, the plate's pretty much like you get on any other one, so yeah. Okay, so I think that's about all I've got until I can actually put this in a system, which will be whenever I can get a Kavari APU in. So thank you for watching my unboxing and overview of the Asus A88XM Plus motherboard. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys very much. I will see you next time.